Hello, Anselm Griffin here with another YouTube tutorial featuring MATLAB. Today, this is a reworking of a previous um, MATLAB video, and in this one I was doing body fat estimation. So it's the same example, but I'm revisiting it and hopefully give, giving a clearer and better explanation. So, just to say that's the previous one there. This um, will be available as a Word file in the description. The IP credit is from there. Just be clear about that. It's from Matworks. I'll do my own later on. And we're using the Levenberg Marquat uh, default training. So we want to estimate the body fat percentage of a person by 13 physical attributes. So there's 13 independent variables, age, weight, height, neck, circumference, etc. Just slow down and scroll. And there's one output, and the one output is the body fat percentage. Okay. So we read it in there. It's an inbuilt data set in MATLAB. And when we run it, we see we get the size of X is 13 by 252. So there's 252 people were analyzed and there's those 13 characteristics. And there's one by 252, you have the body fat percentage. So we're going to do a single hidden layer of 15 neurons. Okay, now you, as to, Problems get more complicated, you need more hidden layers and more neurons, etc. And there we have it in five lines. We're doing 50, one layer, 15 neurons. We're going to view it, we're going to train it, and then we're going to get the performance. And in previous versions, just to go up to the very top, you need to call NN train tool, but that's long gone. It's still not uh, extinct, but they're going to phase it out. So there's no need for that. So just there's the 15 neurons. We we're going to see it. We're going to train it and then we're going to get the performance. So let's have a look. Just going to run it here. So there's the network at the beginning. We had the 15 hidden layers and the zero and the zero and the zero. So nothing in the output, nothing in the output and nothing in the input. When we're finished, there's the 13. Remember there was 13 independent variables. There's one output layer and there's one set of outputs. And just to check, there's 13 plus one plus one equals uh, the number hit, so that's 15. It stopped after 11 iterations. The time, it just couldn't measure it. We look at the performance in a second. The gradient there is given there. The mu is the momentum and the validation checks six. So why did it stop after uh, 11 iterations? So there's the performance. OK, we can see the best validation performance is at Epoch 5. Remember, an Epoch is the adjustments of the weights and biases. So the best validation was at Epoch 5, but it stopped after 11 iterations. So why did it do that? Let's look at the training state here. You can see here that the gradient was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the mu is the momentum, and that's 0 0.01 at epoch 11. So in the more advanced states, uh, when you're terminating, you look at the momentum. And if the momentum is very small, 
you know, that would be an indication to stop. But the reason why we stopped this time was the validation checks was six. So you see here, there was no change in the gradient. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if there's no changes in the gradient, I think it's one by 10 to the minus five, it's the change, it stops. So it's saying if there's no validation change after, um, no change in the gradient, you should say, after six validation checks, uh, the training of the neural network stops. Now, if you run this again, you'd have a different training set and a different validation set, etc. So it mightn't stop at epoch 11. It might stop at 12 or 10 or something like that. But it'll, it'll be less than 20, I'm fairly certain. The error histogram. The error histogram for all experiments, when you look at the errors, that's the mean square error, that's the difference between the observed and the expected. When you plot those errors, I think there's 20 bins there, yeah, 20 sections. You would expect the data to be normally distributed. And it's not perfectly normally distributed. There's a, the tail to the left is a little longer than the tail to the right. But by and large, that looks fairly normally distributed. And this would be a good indication of a good model. If you don't get a normal distribution, it tends to say there was some systematic error, some gross error, some outliers, or there was something seriously wrong with the fitted model. But just by eyeballing it there, we think the fitted model is fairly decent because the data is normally distributed. The regression fit here. So hopefully you know what regression is and hopefully you know what the R is. So you can see here that for the test set, the regression was 0.63. So the R squared would be about around 40%. You know, in my head, 0.63 squared is about 0 0.40, very roughly. Uh, the regression for the validation was 0.8. 86 so 0.86 squared is about 68 70 percent so, so it might be a bit higher than 70 percent the r squared value and then for the training uh it's 93 so that would be what 0.93 squared is but 85 percent and when you take all three together that's the um the test the validation and the training but, um it's 87, so an 87 squared is again around 70, 74%, something like that. So it just gives you an idea of how good uh, the neural network is. And just missed that ever so slightly. Okay, can't get rid of that. And then the fit, nothing will happen here because there's only uh, one single input. Okay, so hope that helps a little, and thanks very much for listening.